I'm going to talk a little bit about how your finances affect your ability to get and keep a security clearance. Because most folks know the effect potentially it has on getting a clearance, but a lot of folks don't know that it can have an effect on you keeping a security clearance. And as we all know here in the uh, DMV area, many, many, many jobs in this area require security clearance, whether you're working for the government or working for a government contracting company, or if you are your own business owner and hope to get a government contract, all of this comes into play. Um, so, first, let me just say, if you are interested in getting a security clearance, whether it's because you want to apply for a position that requires one, or because you have a business where you want to go after a government contract, part of that process includes the government looking at your financial history. They're going to look at your credit report and how you pay your bills or didn't pay your bills. Um, and that has an impact on whether or not they decide to give you a clearance. Most companies, when they're thinking about hiring someone for a position that requires a clearance, want you already to be in a position where you can qualify. So at times, they will turn you down if your finances are not in order and take a candidate whose finances are in order, even if that candidate may not be as qualified as you are. Because if your finances aren't in order, they're never gonna be able to get you a clearance and therefore you can't have the job. And they're not looking to try to spend a whole lot of time, money, and energy on the security clearance process. So, although we tend to separate out our finances from our employment or our businesses, they're actually very intertwined. You need to be looking at your credit long before you decide to apply for a position that requires a security clearance. Most people don't understand why finances are tied into a clearance. The reason is the government looks at it as your security risk. If one of our enemies of the United States came over and said to you, hey, you're in debt $250,000. We're gonna give you a million dollars. Would you go to work and get us some state secrets? You're more susceptible to, to taking that bribe because you have financial problems. And that's why it's a big deal. Most people think it's just, oh, because they think I'm not a good person. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with your security risk and more willing, potentially, to take a bribe to give up information. You know, we don't want people giving out the nuclear launch codes. We really don't want that happening. So they want you to make sure you're not susceptible to giving away information. If your finances are in order enough to get a clearance, it doesn't end there. Most people think that that's where it stops. I got my clearance, I'm good, I've passed the background check, life's great. That's not where it ends. You get reviewed a certain period of time depending upon the level of your clearance. So if you have a certain level of clearance, every five years they're going back into your background again and they're checking your finances again and they're looking at all your information again and if they don't like what they see, they're gonna send you a notice to say, hey, we're thinking about pulling your clearance because your finances are, it was great when you came on board, but they don't look so great now. We think you're a risk now. So just because you get the clearance doesn't mean it's yours to keep. It's not, you know, hey, it's not like the DMV where you take the driving test once and you're good. This is a test you have to pass over and over and over again. 